If we get the sense that a statement is false, we can look to prove its falseness by finding what we call a counterexample. This is what we're going to try to do in this particular lesson. If we're able to find a particular example that proves a claim is false, we call it a counterexample. Let's look at a few examples to see if we can find some counterexamples to statements. Our first claim that we're going to try to find a counterexample for is the following. X is a quadrilateral. X must be a rectangle. Well, first, it might be helpful to know what a quadrilateral is. In case you're unsure, a quadrilateral is any two-dimensional shape that has four sides. In this case, four-sided shapes, or quadrilaterals, is the set that we're working with, and rectangle is the particular property that we're interested in. What we need to do is find a four-sided shape that is not a rectangle. That would be our counterexample. Can you think of any? If you said square, well, that won't quite work, since squares are technically rectangles. They're a special kind of rectangle. Um, what we could use in this particular case might be something like a parallelogram. So for this statement, a parallelogram is going to be our counterexample. If you can think of any other counterexamples, feel free to share them in the comments below. Next up, we have the claim x is an integer. x plus 2 cannot be odd. In this case, integers is the set that we're working with, and x plus 2 being odd is the particular property that we're interested in. If we want a counterexample to this particular claim, we need to find an integer x such that when we add together x and 2, we get an even number. Can you think of any? We could use the number x equals 10 for our counterexample, since this would give us 10 plus 2 is equal to 12, and we know that 12 is an even number. This isn't the only possible counterexample, and if you know any other counterexamples, feel free to share them in the comments below. Next, suppose that we have a statement that contains a universal quantifier. I suspect that the statement every object in this set has a screw top lid to be false. What would I need to show in order to prove that the statement is false? Here, the entire group of five wines makes the set in question, and screw top lid is the property that we're interested in. What we could do is go through each wine one by one until we found a bottle that didn't have a screw top lid. A wine without a screw top lid would be our counterexample. Now it might be difficult to see here, but the last bottle has a cork instead of a screw top lid. So the last wine bottle is the counterexample for this statement. So overall, what does this tell us? To find a counterexample for a statement involving a universal quantifier, we just need to find one object in the set that doesn't have the desired property. This is really no different from what we were doing for general counterexamples. Statements with existential quantifiers are a bit more tricky to prove false. Let's look at the statement, there exists an object in the set that is a beer. What would we have to do to prove that this statement is false? Well, we would have to go through each object in the set one by one and make sure that it wasn't a beer. In our case, there's only five objects to look at, and they're all clearly gluten-friendly wine. So the original statement must be false. You could imagine, though, that if we had a really big set of objects, it would be really challenging to check every single one of those objects. So what does this tell us? Well, we really can't find counterexamples for statements involving existential quantifiers. Instead, if we'd like to prove those statements false, we must look at every single object in the set and show that it, each object doesn't have the property in question. This can sometimes take a lot of work. So to sum everything up, here is a little summary of how to find a counterexample, a general procedure. 
This procedure should work for most statements as long as that statement doesn't involve an existential quantifier. We have to handle those ones a little bit differently. All right, my little epsilons, stay positive.